glorious day on the planet I love Let me tell you what I'm thinking of Cause I've been wondering why it was But it's just life doing what it does We keep trying to mess it up They keep trying to bring us down So I'm just gonna smile at everything around Cause I've got earth beneath my feet And the sky above It's a glorious day on the planet I love And don't tell me about someday somehow Cause all I need is right here right now I got some rhythm and I got some rhyme I got my music and I got my mind We were singing in circles Imprisoned in the past Now I'm just gonna be And I'm free at last Cause I've got earth beneath my feet And the sky above It's a glorious day on the planet I love Because there's children Playing somewhere How's life on Jupiter? I don't care mm -hmm. Cause we've got lovers Just laying there Oh yeah Well I'm no hero I'm not brave I'm just tired of being afraid Cause I've been wondering Why it was But it's just life doing what it does And I've got earth beneath my feet And the sky above I'm gonna rise above That old push and shove Cause I've got earth beneath my feet And the sky above Ah, yeah It's a glorious day on a planet I love Whoa, oh, oh, oh It's a glorious day A glorious day on the planet I love A glorious day on the planet I love A glorious day on the planet I love Hi friends, welcome to Hilltop Spiritual Center Sunday Celebration. My name is Andrea, and I am very delighted to offer this blessing. This blessing for the present moment, the present moment that we are in, that we find ourselves in right here and now. Love is our guiding light. Love is our truth. Love is the wisdom that shows up everywhere. So to this love, my heart is open and divine wisdom pours forth. God is always everywhere. I take that in. God is always everywhere to this entire planet, to each of us present in the consciousness of love and light and truth. We do know this eternal being. We do know this eternal love that is right here and right now. This service is a blessing. The wisdom that pours forth through Reverend Dr. Guy is awesome. It holds great value and truth and love. So thank you for joining today and in your lives and in your world. May you know with me now that God is always everywhere. Peace be with you. Go with love. Shalom. And so it is. Today's reading is Psalm 85, verse 10. Loving kindness and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. I invite you to take the next few minutes for yourself. For as we take a few minutes for ourselves, 
we are extending the gift of love to another. Relax your body, adjust your posture, relax the jaw, the face, all parts of yourself. Feel your body now, breathing itself. And with the softness of the face and the relaxation right here and now, gazing within is the body breathing. Gazing outside of yourself, see love in a person, two-legged, in a four-legged loved one, in nature. See love. Feel love and know love. For in our mind's eye, we extend love to all beings and all things as we create a space of beauty within us. Love arises around us. Know with me the radical implication of oneness. There is no other, there is no them, there is the allness of humanity. Love and light and beauty are eternal. I am and we are that. In your own perfect and divine way, silently offer shalom within yourself or outside, whomever you see, think, or feel, offer them this. May you be filled with a complete and perfect peace and be full of well-being. Shalom. Peace be with you. So be it. And so it is. So hello, dear friends, and welcome to another one of our Sunday celebrations in the virtual world. I'm really excited today because uh, we've got uh, some good and exciting news for you. And I want to start by giving you kind of a heads up. So uh, sometime during the summer, uh, Frank Alves, who has been our music director for 10 years, said to me that he felt in order for him to stay creative and move in the direction that he and Spirit Hill wanted to go, he wanted to step down as music director. So after I got up off the floor and listened to him, um, we just began to collaborate and I just began to be open to what things were happening. And what came our way is uh, this remarkable individual that I'm going to introduce you to in just a second. He is an international performer and songwriter. He's an author of three children's books. You've seen some of his music in our virtual services, but I'm really excited to present to you our new music director, Lee Coulter. Good morning or hello, Lee. How are you? <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for that introduction. And uh, so glad to be on board. I'm really excited. So a couple things. So what we're going to do today in lieu of a talk is we're just going to share a little bit so that you have an opportunity to get to know Lee and, and hear a little bit of his music. So um, firstly, uh, you know, maybe just a little bit about yourself. Uh, you know, what, uh, what guiding star, what illumination has sort of led you from Brisbane, Australia to, uh, Southern California in your music and in your art. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, yeah, so, so much uh, of that story. Um, yeah, definitely uh, always loved music, always loved the power of music since I was a little kid. It was a, the, my first, you know, true love, the first thing I was passionate about. And the reason being is that, you know, not to, to, to get into it too much, but 
both my parents uh, suffered from, you know, some traumas from their childhood and, and from their early adulthood. My mother grew up in Sumatra in a town called Midan, where in the 60s, when she was just a 10-year-old, there was a genocide. Um, and so she kind of carried a lot of that pain with her. Um, and by, so by the time that I was born uh, and she'd moved to Australia, uh, that was still part of her, you know, mentality. And my dad was a Vietnam vet veteran as well. So uh, he had some of uh, that trauma as well. And uh, my, I felt my role was through music, through either a humor or lightheartedness to bring some light and levity to, you know, what could sometimes feel like, you know, this weight that I didn't understand. I didn't know why there was a, a heaviness there, but uh, I was always trying to, you know, show perspective on the good things. And that happened from as early as six, seven years old, before I even played music. That was part of my personality. Um, and then I found the guitar uh, when I was about you know, 11, 12. And we, my brother and I, we sang Simon and Garfunkel harmonies. And um, we just really found ourselves through music. Um, and cut to, you know, teenage years, finding my own identity. Um, and then the singer-songwriter path. Uh, and seeing how that affects people and how, what, what goodness that brought me. And every time I wrote a song that you know, meant something to me, seeing that affect others in a positive way and the attention that brought me, but not only that, the doors that opened, the community it created, it's just been this kind of snowball of, of uh, trial and error and uh, proof of, of concept uh, with, through music. And, 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 and lately I've found... Um, you know, from went from the folk scene to now I'm getting into sound healing and just a, a whole new depth in the last year, a whole new depth of how the vibrations of the, of the mathematics of music can help our cellular level, uh, help us on a cellular level, cellular level, not even just spiritual, but just on a complete human level. So yeah, that's long, long story short. No, it's a fabulous Ish. story, you know, and I, and I just love that idea of mind body connection and, you know, and music itself you know it, it says that the the soul the soul expresses itself through the arts you yes. know our, our mind knows uh, or our mind thinks and the soul knows and and the language of the soul is music absolutely music. yeah i always think um you know everything in the human experience is logistics except for art art yeah. is the contemplation art, art you know art isn't just music and movies and and, and writing art is reflection um, and, and so, you know, we can, we need food, we need water, we need shelter. These are things that are logistical. We need to figure that out. And, and art is the appreciation of all the logistics, the appreciation and the reflection of that. So I, I've always loved art in any art form and any sort of, you know, contemplation in that, in that realm. It, it separates us from the rest of the matter of that's yeah. around us. One of, my, one of my favorite spiritual heroes is a man by the name of Abraham Heschel. And he says, there's two ways of knowing. There's reason and there's wonder. Yes. And wonder brings us to amazement and awe. And, uh, and, and that's a perception. And I think that's the beauty of art. It's the beauty of, of nature. You know, it's that, that connecting to something beyond the linear mind where we're amazed or we're surprised. Yes. We're just in awe. And then we're open to a new kind of insight. Yeah, and, that, and that's a, that's a f uh, frequent tool I'll use in my, my lyric writing. Is, is going back to that awe because, you know, this life and, and this world and this experience, there's so many things that can be challenging, so many things that will you know, try, to, try to bring you to your knees, you know. And, uh, and so if there's something about a day, about a, an event, about a person, about yourself that can make you feel in awe, and there really should be if we, if we can zoom, back, zoom out, and that takes privilege. You know, we're, we're creatures of survival, so there's times where we feel like we we don't have the privilege to go, I can look at the world, I can look at existence from that point of view, and that's perfectly mm -hmm. normal. But at the same time, that appreciating, appreciating it and that awe for, for existence could mm -hmm. always be there. And I try to remind that through music. Yeah. And so that brings me to one of my, my favorite questions. It's a, class, it's a question that I ask uh, almost every time I teach a class and anytime someone comes to me personally, because I think it's one of the most important questions. It's, it's this, what kind of universe do you live in? Wow. What I mean, by that is it, is it an intelligent universe or is it a universe that is random? Uh, is it a, is it a benevolent universe? Is it a malefic universe? Well, uh, universe that desires are good, 
I'll have to make a little uh, Einstein reference here. I got my Albert on the on the wall there, um, and it's all relative, isn't it? Um, you know, I I, uh, I you know I think I believe in a universe that ha obviously has laws that we understand many of the laws of, um, and and th through that, through the laws that we do know, and through what we can observe, I I believe that there is some sort of you know in that sense that there is an intelligence. It, it's got a set of rules it needs to follow. And it doesn't break from those rules unless you're in a black hole. It's very rare. But outside of that, it's, you know, there's these rules, even those rules that apply to black holes apply to black holes almost, you know, every time as far as we know. So there's these laws and the fact that there are laws uh, in that way, you could sense an intelligence. It has an agenda. It will choose this path of least resistance within its laws over anything else. Um, so that way it has its own, you could say, mind. But the word intelligence itself I always have this connotation that humans, when we hear intelligence, we think, oh, it's got this human brain and it thinks in human ways. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I don't, I don't ever think of it as an intelligent, I, I think of consciousness, I think the universe has a consciousness, um, so in that way, absolutely intelligent. Um, but I like to think of it as far more complex uh, than our little minds can understand. And, uh, and beyond that, um, you know, it's a beautiful or awesome universe that, uh, that I think that we have this little snippet of existence within and we can like instead of instead of going too far into like asking too many questions about answering every question every pit of uncertainty that we have about the universe uh, uh spending the time appreciating what we do know what we do have what we do have in common um is is where i try to spend my time but uh, absolutely always always uh, into documentaries about uh, space and 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 uh, the cosmos and all that and so that that's the universe itself is is probably my closest thing to spirituality and in that sense it's the it's the it's this intelligent non-human intelligence that's uh, that deserves respect and awe yeah you know um, in uh, you know we're we're in what's known in the Jewish calendar as the days of awe uh, the time between uh, Rosh Hashanah which was last week and and Yom Kippur, which is that, which is uh, the beginning of next week, and uh, you know it celebrates the birthday of the universe. Uh, tradition says, but but what I what I love, and I, I guess something that really changed my way of looking at it is when I began to understand this idea that the universe that we live in is really old, really old, and has a really long future ahead of it. And that we're in just a micro moment of this. And, that, and in that, that the universe is unfinished. It's yeah. not a complete thing. It's evolving. It's learning. Uh, it's not like there's spirit and matter, but it's spirit matter. Absolutely. There's, there's this beingness and, and form always gives way or structure always gives way to consciousness. Yeah. And and it's, so, it's the, those codes are so consistent. Those yeah. co the coding of that basic, you know, the um, Fibonacci sequence and spirals and these, you know, whether it's a galaxy or an atom or, you know, the, the cells in our bodies and then the plants and then the cacti that you see. So obviously the, these universal laws are so, uh, you know, almost redundant. You know, it's, it's so, in a way, as complex as it is, it's, it's really rather simple. And I love that. Yeah. I mean, it just, you know, to, to me, you know, again, nature is the, our greatest teacher in metaphysics. And, and just to watch how a, a plant or a flower will move and, and track the sun and, yeah. and, and just certain things that just begin to happen. Yeah. Is it human intelligence? No, absolutely not. But it's, but, you know, human intelligence is part of another intelligence. Absolutely. We, we think we're at the top of the food chain, you know, and right. I think the gods sort of look down and think, oh, you, you funny little guy. Don't, well, I've spent a lot of my time, because my music does cross over into, uh, you know, I've never set out to, to make spiritual music. This was just music that I thought helped me and, and in turn helped others, and I saw it happen. So I never set out to just go, I'm going to make spiritual music. But uh, what you were saying about this human, human intelligence versus that being a part of a universal intelligence is that I've, I feel like I've witnessed humans uh, have this uh, detachment, you know, and, and I, I'm definitely, I'm still learning how to, to not feel as detached as a human being within a universe. I just want to feel like I am the universe because we are, you know, we, we're not separate from it. So uh, I 
am really careful to always talk about uh, the you know the the universe. We are the universe. Um, yeah. We are dancing through the stars. And yeah, that that going back, it's almost like things get lost in translation. And and through my songwriting, I always try to try to simplify and get back to where we are one with everything. Um, and in many ways, we are how the universe is becoming aware of itself. Yes. Yes. You know, I, it was, uh, who was it that's Kurt Vonnegut said, you know, we are the mud that got to get up and look around. Totally. Like us, lucky mud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. You know, it, it, um, it, the, the, those, those quotes and observations throughout history, throughout time, throughout different philosophies. Um, I love learning. And I've even heard you mention a few in the few times we've met. I've heard you mention a few quotes from people I'd never heard of that, you know, hundreds of years ago said the same thing or thousands of years ago said the same thing that I thought I thought of for the first time, you know, a couple of years ago. And I just love that these experiences just, are just reoccurring. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think we, we, still, we still ask the same questions. We may ask them in more sophisticated ways. We have different ways of kind of looking at them. And, and maybe, you know, in earlier times people intuited it, you know, and I, and I think, you know, right now, um, something that I've heard said before and I think has real validity is, you know, science is becoming the new language of mysticism Yeah, uh, because it does, it brings us beyond what is known and what is comfortable and what is, what is predictable. It brings us to that place of amazement and surprise and awe. I mean, when you think in terms of, you know, what they say, I think it was uh, Jacob Bohm who says, you know, if you think you understand quantum physics, you don't understand quantum physics. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you think you got this? It means you don't got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of my favorite things to think about is a uh, is uncertainty itself being a basic building block of mm -hmm. the universe. Uncertainty, and one of the one of the things one of the reasons I try to I try to detach or I try to not make things too human in its in in the awe experience uh, and make it more universal. So with yeah. uncertainty being a uh, being a building block of the universe. Uh, it's a, in the, within the human experience, we're on a constant battle to, uh, to diminish uncertainty. It is our goal to make sure we know where our next meal is coming from. We know our loved ones are safe. We are trying to diminish uncertainty as best we can. And I think that's, you know, we, that's why greed is a part of our nature is, is I'm, I, want, I want the least uncertainty as possible. So we we go like this, and where quantum physics tells us is that if you're trying to rule out uncertainty, you're just gonna you're gonna cause yourself more pain, and that's where the ego comes in, and not being able to not being able to grapple with uncertainty is, I think, a, a lot of the root of human struggle. And the fact is that uncertainty will always be a part of this universe because it's a basic building block, and we we need to learn how to find the awe in the uncertainty. Absolutely, you know, there's a there's a, a mystical tradition that we talk a lot about here, which is you know, the, the, the way that the soul grows, which is very, very similar to how evolution works, is there's order, disorder, and reorder. You know, and we love order. You know, whether it works for us or not, we love it because it's predictable. We can depend on it. But then all of a sudden, a phone call of whatever happens, a pandemic, and we're thrust into this disorder. But it's the most creative place there is. And, and it doesn't return to what the old normal is. It restructures it to a reorder something new and novel and uh and um and different from how it was that's 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 how progress is you know whether it be the universe how it understands itself or our own soul or our own life because we we've all we've all thought we had it until we didn't yes <laughs> and then we got through that differently in a, in a way that we could not have even imagined absolutely and then and you know i as much as I, I always try to put a hopeful spin on everything, and sometimes with with you know if you see it through to the end, and there are, you know I I don't necessarily think the universe is on the human individual side. Uh, you know, there's no there's no prom the universe isn't promising us if I do A, B, and C, and that that's that's the nature of uncertainty. And so uh, I, I do believe that as as you go through this life, uh, if you can keep that mindset and keep that. Uh, the hopefulness and the perspective, you, you're going to be much happier. And, but there is going to come a time where, for all of us where, you know, those bad things happen or, you know, the bad days happen or a bad life event happens. Um, and that's, that's, there's an acceptance to that's, being, that's a part of it. And we can fight 
fight the things we need to fight. We can stay as healthy as we possibly can. But uh, there's, a, there's an avoidance of the uncertainty. There's also an acceptance that when those things happen, that's also a part of it. And we can, we can hate it. We can feel frustrated and angry. But, uh, you know, it's easy to say when you're sitting here and feeling healthy and, and good. But at the end of the day, like, every life and every experience is, this, is mathematically improbable and, and majestic. Um, and and we're, not, we're not meant to feel good about every one of them. Yeah. No. no. You know, and I think, you know, something that's humbled me lately and that I sit with is this idea that, you know, we, we think as a species that we're it. But, you know, we're, we're just, we're a species and a long line of species that have come before us. And chances are, if we follow the trajectory, there will be other species after us. You know, Absolutely. We're, just, we're here in this moment contributing what we do to this moment, but but life is bigger even than our concept of ourself or, or who we are in this universe. Absolutely. And I love, you know, and I, I worry that sometimes that, you know, because I, I have that same philosophy and I worry when I put that into a song if that, you know, comes out in an interview like this, that, that it, it's, you know, it can sound grim to people. And I think that's why people go toward uh, the concept of, you know, something more mystical that, that could bring more comfort. Um, but with, with, with all of that, uh, you know, we, the, the idea is we can, we, we can have this major effect on, on not just us and our communities in our lifetime, but on the planet. Um, we can shape how we want to see future generations. We can shape what the world will look like for, for the species that are after us. You know, because what we do, like you think about, you know, the dinosaurs foraging and, uh, and all, the, the, all the things that different organisms throughout history created that made it possible for us to have the kind of air that we have and the kind of soil that we have. Um, we're doing that now. And a lot of what we do is detrimental, but, but as individuals making the right decisions, making those good decisions absolutely makes a difference. So, you know, there is a grandeur to that. There is, you know, I always, when I think of, uh, you know, our, our spec, the specs that we are, it can feel like we're, we're meaningless and we're nothing, but the, the ripples that we have are, are huge for not only us, but the, the people around us and uh, the, the world and the universe around us. Mm -hmm. It actually reminds me of this song that I wrote called The Golden Age about, you know, we're talking about uh, the universe and matter and how spiral galaxies and atoms have similar makeups and, uh, as we do. And so I wrote this song with that in mind. It's called The Golden Age. Open up my eyes, I get such a surprise Taking in everything I see From the sunlight on my skin To the skin I'm living in A phenomenal anomaly If you think of every atom Every action and reaction That happen or happen to be From the very first movement In the universe To the time of you and me Sing I'm alive and the world is my stage You and I We're living in the golden age We're living in the golden age Everybody seems to be searching for some meaning The meaning don't matter to me I realize why the wise advise is simply simplicity They say this is your life, man, do what you can To find what makes you happy Yeah, this is my time, I'ma get mine before I fade, I fade away Cause I'm alive and the world is my stage You and I we're living in the golden age. So, you know, um, our, our theme for this month has been we make the path by walking. And, and essentially it's this, it's this, you know, here we find ourselves at this stage of wherever we are as an individual, as a, as a nation, as a spiritual community, whatever that may be, you know, here we find ourselves, and, um, you know, there isn't a set path. There really isn't a, a map. There's wisdom from the ages. There's intuition to guide us. 
But really, at the end of the day, it's, it's to follow our heart, our individual, and, and, and to create our own unique, original path in life. I, I, think, I think with that, is, you're absolutely right. And with, you know, because there is this solo perspective of existence, we all have this solo perspective. We can't see from someone else's perspective. So there's, there's this aloneness to it that it feels like I can't, I can't feel outside of my experience. Um, but it's so important when, when, we, when we better ourselves, when we make sure our minds are clear and make sure that we're adding what we want to add to this experience, we're adding what we want to, to, to our environment. Uh, mm-hmm. When we live that way, it only encourages others to do the same thing. And that's what I'm really trying to do with music is, you know, as, as tough as it has been to pay the bills um, with this guitar in my hands, it's, it's a permission giver. When I play music, it's uh, this is something I'm passionate passionate about, and hopefully, when people see me play, they can tell I'm passionate about it, and I'm choosing to do this with my time and my experience, and this is what I'm spending my life doing. Um, and it gives permission to others. Say, oh, that's a, that's the way to do it. That is that that is a good path. And whatever you're passionate about, uh, you can inspire others by practicing the thing you're passionate about. And so I think that's a uh, that's that you know even though we're in this alone experience. Uh, of, you know, I'm seeing through my perspective, I've got my passions. If you do those, and it could seem selfish, but it's not because you are encouraging and, and uh, inspiring other people to live their best selves. Um, yeah. I, I was thinking, I would, you know, there's that, there's that hundredth monkey theme, theme that kind of goes around. But I was thinking just as you were speaking this, this idea, you know, I remember the four minute mile, right? And it's like nobody ran a four minute mile. And then somebody ran a four minute mile. And then all of a sudden, all kinds of people started running, you know, so as soon as one individual stretches beyond what was known, what was accepted, what's supposed to be, and, and they, they forge their own way, they create the possibility for other people to do the same. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I agree with you completely. You know, it's so important for us to follow the muse of our own heart because it's not just bringing us forward. It's bringing all creation forward. Absolutely. You know, everything follows with us. You know, we all, we all create the possibility for everybody as soon as we embrace the possibility for ourselves. Well, it's love, isn't it? That's choosing love over fear. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, so uh, the fearful thing to do is uh, I'm not good enough to do, uh, to do the thing I want to do. I'm not, I'm not uh, privileged enough to be happy. You know, yeah. there's too many bad things. I'm just, I can't, I can't possibly be happy. Um, and, and when, you choose, when you choose that, and not, not saying that that's a choice all the time, I mean, sometimes you can't help it, um, but, but if we can choose the self-love of following passion in the little time that you can, uh, if you can choose that, uh, that love is going to be obvious to, uh, to others. That self-love, that, that love for existence, um, it's, the alternative path is fear. And, yeah. and, and, the, and when, the, when the fear is... Uh, you know, going inward, shutting down, uh, it, it not only makes you feel isolated, it, you're not now reaching out to other people. You're now not coming across other people. And, make, and so that other person that could have fed off your love for yourself and your love for this existence isn't feeling that thing. Um, and, and so we'll all feel isolated if we do that. So we need each other. That's the beautiful thing about humanity. We need each other to keep reminding each other that we need to do this. There's this wonderful, you know, that, that there in the Hebrew Bible, there's these beautiful creation poems, you know, where God creates this and God creates this, you know, and, and in this whole thing, you know, God is just taking delight in his creation and says, and God created light and saw that it was good. And then God created the earth and saw that it was good. And then God created the trees and they were good and the animals were good and on and on and on. Everything is good. And then God created man and God says, it is not good for man to be alone. <laughs> It is not good for us to be alone. We are, we are hardwired from these mystical intuitions to be social, to yes. support and depend on each other. I think just the fact, you know, how an infant, how, how dependent an infant is when it's born. You know, a horse is born and it gets up and goes running across the field in, in an hour. In a human, it takes us years right. before, we can, uh, before we can even be somewhat independent, and that's that sense of connection, belonging, supporting is so essential to who we are. Absolutely. And, and we, sometimes I feel like we think it's, uh, that'll be created by someone else. 
you know that you know, I'm just here in my community. My community is a is a community that creates community. Not we, I create the community. Yeah, yeah. I create. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, it's on it's on us to create the community, and it's on every individual in the community to make the community. So they, you, I, and this is I'm only saying that because this is something I've recently learned. You know, I've I've been and then, another reason I'm just so happy to be a part of Hilltop. Um, oh. Yeah. So yeah, it's just uh, yeah. You community. know why I got into ministry is you know ministry is community act our ministry is community activism. It's it's you know what what we create is community. That's that's who we are. Absolutely. And, yeah, I, I can see that. And yeah, the same thing with with music is that it it was a it was kind of a you know I'm I'm kind of halfway between an introvert and extrovert when it comes to performance. I love being on stage. I love to share my thoughts. Um, but at the same time, I'm an introvert and I, you know, unless I'm rehearsed or unless I know what I'm talking about, I'll, just, I'll keep to myself. Um, and, and so, so that was a, being on stage and sharing music was an easy way to create community for me. But it, even then, there was still a detachment. Um, it was a bit too far from the people, you know, that I'm playing to. So uh, I'm looking for a, ne- a next level of the kind of entanglement with the community. It's, it's just instead of just singing to people, I want it to be like his his life, you know, this is how life is happening. How, how's your life happening? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I have one last question. We haven't even done music yet, but I hope yeah. we're going to Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I thought about one before, but I had to change guitars. So we'll, <laughs> maybe we'll say, we'll say that for, we'll say that, we'll do it in a bit, I think. Okay. So, so, so the last question is, you know, and this, this comes right out of, uh, out of Lord of the Rings, you know, Tolkien, I'm a big Tolkien fan, is, uh, you know, the path, the fellowship, how we journey. But, but periodically in the journey, we realize that we're carrying something that is no longer necessary. In fact, it becomes an impediment. And so oftentimes, you know, moving forwards means letting go of something. Yeah. And so I'd love to just kind of challenge you with the question is, have you recently in your own life experienced this idea that, um, boy, this was something that I really identified myself as? And it's no longer who I am. And it's yeah. Not- yes, I, I do have one of those, um, and it's it's an ongoing process, as many of these you know revelations are. Uh, but it, I'd say, you know, a while back, maybe about five years ago, I was really grappling with the idea, and this is still something I'm dealing with today: it, the idea of per- uh, not perfectionism, but idealism. Um, you know, I don't know uh, if everyone from every generation feels this way, but Growing up in the 80s and 90s, it was just, it was just you know, Hollywood movies and Hollywood kind of like romance was the idea, ideal of romance and um, uh, Hollywood version of manliness and masculinity uh, was, you know, the, what I kind of strived for. Um, and, and just realizing that, you know, all that idealism that I, that I would, w- was raised with, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, it doesn't, it, not not attaining that level of idealism or a lifestyle or life um, shouldn't reflect on my happiness, and and so that that was uh, something I had to let go of is, is idealism. And I actually just wrote a song that which we can play that one now, but um, that was about making mistakes and f- uh, failing forward. You know, like uh, and, and that's all that's all a part of it. I don't usually write songs like this But I got this feeling I can't dismiss See, I've been afraid, played the part too long Chasing perfection, wondering why it went wrong But life's not like a movie poster It's a stop, start, fall apart, roller coaster So stand up tall, you can't win them all And you don't always hit the notes you're supposed to No, you don't always hit the notes you're supposed to that's, yeah, that kind of deal, you know. Well, so uh, again, I just am so excited that you have come on board. Uh, I'm excited to see how we as a community begin to collaborate and, uh, and expand and grow. And um, yeah, you know, our saying here is we, we love each other into wholeness. And, love it. What my teacher used to say is in spiritual community, we, we grow up all over each other. So, uh, you know, it is that we're going to hit the wrong notes and we're going to create amazing music. So um, 
welcome aboard. Uh, Thank you so much. I, I appreciate the opportunity for community, and I, I said to the team the other day that I feel like my music has found a little home yeah. at, at the yeah. center there. So, so thank you so much. We'll be seeing you. So thank you once again for being part of our celebration. And um, as Lee was talking, you know, we are community and community has the many gifts that we give each other and the support that we have. And part of, a, part of being community, too, is also that sense that we can depend on each other, that we have each other's back. And so with that, I want to thank you for your continual and generous support of our community. Your, your generosity is making all these things possible. And as you can see up above and around and through, there are many ways for you to give. And so thank you for that. And always, to those whom you love and those whom you receive love from, I wish you many, many blessings. Yeah, love. 